Alrighty, this should be the last one, y'all. This this will be the people news. One more time at it. Uh, never look straight forward. Always look around. You'll be able to protect yourself by any means necessary. Arm yourself with knowledge, okay? Quit going by hearsay. Always do your own research. Even if you do have attorney, find out what he's writing in there and verify, okay? So that way, if he's doing something wrong, far a bar grievance. Or, you know, you may have to make a claim later. But you can't make a claim of something you don't know about, right? You can put him in small claims court and all that kind of stuff. A breach of contract, okay? Uh, some form of agreement. Uh, agreement. All right. Um, do, 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 do. What else was I going to say? All right. Uh, it's educational purposes only, okay? I'm not an attorney and not giving legal advice. Anything I say, dude, it's just my opinion, people, okay? Again, I'm here to say as well this is newsworthy so i'm going to use the first amendment as news on all these videos here of the seattle cabosity <laughs> all right um well because it's newsworthy we've got to see what they are doing against the people uh one of my favorite videos is some time back when they called, well, a couple of different videos with different guys, right? Calling out the judge, saying they're committing treason and all that kind of stuff. And one went all the way through there. That was actually the correct, in the United States of America, a way of going through the process of courts, right? There's got to be a claimant. And states and towns and all that cannot be a claimant. They're not an injured party. The sooner we figure this out, the better off we all would be, okay? And, you know, uh, there's got to be a victim. Well, the victim can come up and um, file a claim, all right? And this is the reason why the war on drugs is such a problem. I, I don't believe in the drug uh, thing and all that, okay? I don't do drugs or anything. Um, but there is a private business going on, okay? Uh, good or bad. Okay, I'm here for rights. Okay, not for the state to make a claim. I'm here for victims to make a claim and be just to get the person that created the victim to jail. And since the state cannot be a victim, why are you sitting in jail? Okay, that's a bill of attainer. Any type of law and saying if you don't obey this and this, you just $200 fine, bill of attainer, ex post facto. I state of Texas is uh, Article 1, uh, 16. Bill of Retainer as post facto. Okay, all right, let's go. Uh, Curtis, given the opportunity to be released, I worry that he will only us to further. He is engaged in patterns of violence that put me in and simply share a danger. Curtis has no regard for you. The police report is stopped me, harassed me, and used our son to gain access to life. I ask you to please keep his bail and not have it currently set forward and that you issue an RC. Issue an NCO as a safeguard. Your Honor, I am terrified of Kurt, what he might do next. If you release him, I'll have to take... I'm terrified of Kirk. So, allegedly, on the news, go back and check that video out. On the news, why was she at his house? They don't live together, people. If she was so in fear, why was she at his house? My minor son disrupt, disrupt his life and mind and go into hiding out of fear that Kurt will cause us further harm. Your Honor, he must lower his bail if he chose to release I ask you please release him on the HD of victim And I'm going to have a, an appendix video I want to show Mr. Bench before I have uh, it. And can you provide uh, copies? Uh, I, already, I think I already have a copy of that, but if you can provide me a copy of the documents that you're reading today, that would be great. I have objections to all of those conditions, Your Honor. And the reason being that they're they're patently absurd and obviously false. Miss Owen uh, wasn't even um, concerned enough to block my cell phone number. She's been more than happy to receive text messages from me because as my text messages actually show her, her intent is to try to leave them off the imprisonment. She's not afraid of me. 
Um, there's been no allegation that I've ever so much as raised a hand at her because we've already been through in County Superior Court. The only times that Ms. Owen and I were afforded the opportunity to testify in court was before Commissioner Schaefer on 9-3 of 2021. And Commissioner Schaefer, if you look up that, um, there was a full dismissal order issued by Commissioner Schaefer. Commissioner Schaefer said that, quote, I find Mr. Benchu's testimony to be credible, unquote, which in other words means Commissioner Schaefer found Jessica Ray Owen's testimony to be false. She has a pattern of maliciously lying. She's not actually afraid of me. The only thing she's afraid of is that her crimes are going to be exposed. Um, this, the, there are already allegedly valid restraining orders issued by Judge David Keenan, by Judge Willie Gregory, and this is an absurdity and a waste of court resources. Even if, even if I was Ted Bundy, having a third set of restraining orders saying basically the same thing is so. Um, as far as the bail goes, I'm financially indigent. There's already three hundred and sixty thousand dollars of warrants out of Seattle Municipal Court that are a violation of the Eighth Amendment, and. I mean, I've been in jail. I've met people accused of murder, of bank robbery, and a host of other violent crimes. And my current bail amount is higher than theirs. So um, I understand that that's the county's position. They're trying to make me as the perpetrator. But my son and I are the victims. I've tried to address all of these issues in multiple court cases. And instead of being um, fairly heard, I've been accused of being vexatious when I'm simply trying to stop the kidnapping and abuse of my son perpetrated by two perjuring prostitutes. That's what Jess Gray Owen and Magali Elizabeth Lerman are. They've made careers on deceiving men and people with money and people in positions of power, and that's all they're continuing to do. So that's my position here on. Let me take a look at the certification here, please. All right. Um, so, Mr. Benzer, I just want to say that your uh, argument basically rests on facts of the underlying allegations. I understand that that's really important. That's just really difficult cult for me to make a determination prior to a trial. I have allegations that you committed a series of violating court orders. I understand that you will say that that's untrue, that the person who's making those allegations is doing it to harass you, and that that person has been found to be not credible in prior court hearings. That's all important stuff for a trial. It's really difficult for me to make a determination as what's accurate, this or you, under these circumstances. Uh, so what I take a look at is then your ties to the community, your risk to a fear, fail to appear in court, your risk to violate court orders, your risk to um, interfere with the administration of justice, and your risk to the community or the individual who's um, making these accusations in this case as well. It, well I'm going to pause right there. Remember, she said administrative. Key word right there. Not constitutionality, but the administrative. It's my turn at, at this point to talk. I am making those findings at this point. Um, and then I go to whether what the appropriate bail amount would be. Right now, the bail is $500,000. Um, I am going to reduce bail, given your very limited criminal history, to $250,000. I'm going to further make the requirement that if you were to post bail, you would also be placed on EHD with GPS and with victim notification. Um, and I'm going to order all the other conditions as well, which is to keep the court updated with any address to come to court as needed to not commit any further um, court violations. If you were arrested on a new charge, that would be a violation of this as well. You wanted to say something further, Mr. Bowser? 
Yes, John, thank you. I just would like to note my objection for the record that um, Detective Ryan Ellis um, is a co-conspirator, that he was the one that supposedly uh, served me with the final restraining order from the family court case, which he supposedly filed record of into case number 21-5-00680-6 on or around November 15th of 2022. And I've already showed in court, in federal court, that not only did Detective Ellis not serve me, so that means even if the restraining order was valid, I wasn't served with it, but that Mr. Ellis knew full well that I had no guns in my house because he is personally... Right, Mr. Benton, this, okay. is all, this is all too much. And then the one final thing was my no contact order. I understand that you're saying there's already no contact order, so it's duplicative. I only have control over the order in connection with this case, and so I am going to order a new contact and attend the new order, which should be the of this. Um, we need to set next dates. Can you please do that as well? The uh, state captain's expiration at, as speed trial commencing today as October 7, 2024. We ask for a trial date of September 24th and on the date of August 20th. Okay, so we'll set that the on the date of uh, August 20th. And that's essentially a trial readiness. And I'm sorry, the trial date of September 24th? Yes, sir. Okay, the trial date of September 24th. All right, so Mr. Benson, we do have a copy of the no contact order. Typically, we ask defendants to sign it. I don't know if you're willing to sign it or not, but we will get you a copy of the no contact order so you have all that information, okay? Thank you. I, and for the record, I'm not willing to sign it, but, you know, for the record, you handed it to me. Okay, I understand. Um, and, but I will ask, though, to make sure that you read through it so you understand specifically what I'm prohibiting you to do, which I'm is really right. no calls, no emails, no third-party contact. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you want Mr. Ben to have a copy of the order signed by yourself. Okay, we'll do that then. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I do have a problem to stop this case number soon. Okay. These are the orders and dates, so that's where I was going to see those things to stop. You're not that right. I know. Okay. 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 This is an ominous application. Which makes all the demands for data yeah. free. Yeah. Okay. Three products. Uh, that's Two copies mentioned your signature block that wrote refused to sign. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. They won't be an issue. But thank you. Okay. And then, um, uh, yeah. this is the order that sets condition of release, okay, which indicates that. Argued, argued for less restrictive conditions of release. The court said bail in the amount of two hundred fifty thousand dollars on account of home detention with GPS monitoring, and victim notification if bonds posted, and then uh, I have no contact with Jessica Owens, but some children's Natalie Lerman, Magalia, and then the other conditions that I read on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have the HD condition that permit? There's some in Bitcoin Square.
Mr. Eleven, they're over from the oh, week. Yeah, Mr. Eleven, I know that you don't typically do the EHD conditions, but I just want to be sure that we have everything for Mr. Venter. That's just an education. So I'm going to give you the good word to speak about trying to run the test. The other side, I got to fill out this action. And do we also have a waiver of counsel allowing him to per se and executing? Yeah, Mr. Benzer, if this is your conditions of release, did you want to sign this or do you want to refuse to sign this as well? I would like to decline to sign this. Okay. Refuse to sound to be stubborn. I can, I, is it alright with you if I might decline to sign them? Okay. Mr. Sign. This is the copy that I have with you. Yes. So I served uh, Mr. Bench with this copy of the uh, RCW 1099 order for having me at the meeting outside of the Neither the conditions conduct for people who are on electronic home detention. These are things you've got to fill out. I don't know if you want to go on the HD. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I can't go over that. So, Mr. Benson, if it does, what I'm going to tell you is that if you don't sign those, you won't get released to EHD if you're able to make bail. So, what I did is I reduced your bail, but then added the condition of electronic home detention. What I am going to do, though, is work. We need to go on to the other matters we yeah. have on today. If you do, wish to sign that then you can give it to us a little bit later but i want to give you the chance to read through it all rather than just telling you to sign unless you want to just sign but i, I don't want to push you to do that you just won't go to ehd and won't get released if that's fine yeah i'll put up on signing it um which will afford me time to read through it fully and then you can get on to other matters for the day okay that's we'll fine. do that then we're going to go ahead and um unless mr lavin is there anything further on mr vintage i have Produced a waiver of counsel form yet. Um, so I'm working on the record. All right, there we go. As uh, here and now, there has not been any updates on this case. Uh, the last time we heard anything is that they didn't let us watch the video of his last court case, which was what, last Thursday, Friday, something like that. So they denied uh, public to uh, watch it. Oh, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> I'm just saying, I wonder why. <clears throat> All right, this will be the people news. Bye, y'all.